And good morning, everyone. Uh, it's my great pleasure to be here to present uh, some of the very exciting projects uh, at the ARC, you know, Reese Hub. Uh, my name is Johnson. I'm from the School of Civil and Environmental Engineering uh, of UNSW. So to start with the, my presentation, I'd like to have a quick introduction about who we are. So RIS is about the resilient and intelligent infrastructure systems. Yeah, this is like a, a research hub, uh, you know, joint funded by the Australian Research Council. That's sort of like most, most prestigious uh, source of research funding in this country. Uh, and also it's a, a joint project uh, by four universities uh, together, uh, including UNSW, uh, and the University of Western Sydney, Queensland University of Technology, uh, and also the University of Melbourne. So I think this hub is, you know, we try to work together with the, the industry partners and the government uh, and also the research community to develop and implement science-based policy and integrated, you know, solutions to, you know, to the current and future challenges about the infrastructure, urban systems, and resources energies uh, in Australia and globally. Uh, at the same time, uh, we're very proud of, you know, of the, uh, the hub to be funded by, uh, at the moment, about 18 industry partners. Uh, most of them are from Australia, uh, and also we have uh, some international industry partners. Uh, and then for the hub, pretty much it works in this way. Uh, so. At the moment, it's being funded by those industry partners about $6.5 million cash into the hub for the next five years. And then at the same time, it's being uh, like matched by additional $5 million cash from the ARC. So in total, we have around like $11.5 million cash uh, for five years time. And then at the same time, uh, we're going to redistribute those funding to fund many, many projects uh, and also under five different themes. Uh, so as mentioned today in quite a few uh, very exciting uh, presentations already about the digital things for the, you know, the smart cities, for the future roads, uh, and also for the like even the suburbs. Uh, and then in this uh, research hub, uh, there are five themes uh, of the research projects including the first one is about the sensing, ubiquitous sensing, intelligent and adaptive systems. And then the second theme, we look into data collection using drones, robots, images, point clouds, or all sorts of the data. And then theme three, we look into analytics of the data. So we try to develop like advanced models, uh, simulation, and also prediction analysis tools. And then for the themes four, uh, we also have a lot of, uh, you know, projects working on infrastructure health monitoring, uh, especially for the bridges, railways, uh, and roads. Uh, the last theme, probably that's the most relevant topic to the workshop today. Uh, it's about digital twin spatial data, uh, and also the de decision support. So personally, I'm part of the theme five, uh, with, uh, Professor CC together. Uh, and then at the moment, uh, we have already funded 35 research projects uh, across three different universities, including UNSW, University of Melbourne, and uh, QUT. Uh, and then include that also includes five projects under the theme five of Digital Twins. So here, I also uh, just give you a bit more insight uh, information about the topics uh, to be started in theme five. For example, the integration and structuring of the data uh, and also prognosis. Digital twin and decision support, visualization, virtual reality, and also interactive guidance system. And then finally, it's about the adaptive, intelligent, uh, and resilient design. Uh, and then in this slides, uh, you can also see a list of uh, five currently funded projects in theme five. Uh, including the first project led by uh, Professor Sisi on uh, like generic library of uh, spatial concepts and uh, asset definitions. So I'm the uh, the lead CI of the second project about automation, automated scan versus beam 
for real-time construction progress management of the infrastructure projects. So in this case, we try to look at the development of the digital twins in construction. Uh, that's to me, it's probably one of the most challenging tasks. Um, and then at the same time, our team from Melbourne Uni uh, also look into the applications of digital twins for different uh, areas like the flooding, uh, flood management, uh, underground pipelines, and also uh, some uh, some other areas of the digital twin for uh, the spatial area. All right, so just quickly uh, shift to the research area uh, we, we are working on uh, over the last decade. So we try to look at the digital twins in construction engineering, or sometimes it's about the construction informatics. So as you know, like the BIM, that's a building information modeling has been very, very commonly used in the design, in the architecture uh, of the new construction projects. And it's already become a, like a compulsory requirement for many, many countries. If you are going to work on a government funded project, you have to deliver the beam of the project. Uh, and then we have been looking into the digital twins uh, and try to connect the physical world with the design uh, during the construction stage. And as we have discussed a lot today, uh, there are a lot of different applications for digital trains, could be for the urban planning, uh, for the infrastructure asset management, or even for the manufacturing industry. But the moment when we're looking into the construction engineering, that becomes very, very challenging because number one, it's an ever-changing world for construction, right? And if you go to the site every day, it could be different. And then how are you going to develop such kind of a dynamic digital train could be every, you know, could be different every day. Uh, second uh, is also about the data collection. Uh, as you can imagine, if the site is ever-changing and then probably the terrestrial laser scanner won't work and then airborne LIDAR or photogram uh, photogrammetry may not work because we cannot do the that you know the data acquisition quick enough, uh, and then at the same time, uh, in order to understand the potential and uh, and explore the applications in the construction engineering, uh, one of my PhD students, uh, Katika, can spend some time in her early stage of the PhD research and try to understand the different levels uh, of the digital twin, uh, and then in this case, we start with the the lowest one. It's about the descriptive layer uh, of digital twins. So pretty much that's about the static 3D modeling uh, for a better data sharing between uh, different stakeholders. And to me, that's about the definition of the beam. Even before the start of a project, we come up with a design, we can come up with the, the beam model. But at the same time, when you look at the second level, it's about the information or informa uh, informative model uh, that's about the additional operational uh, and, or sensory data uh, to indicate the built environment conditions. And then on top of that, we, it's about the prediction, comprehensive understanding, all right? And uh, so it's about the semantic information uh, about the simulation into the future. Uh, and then eventually we're talking about autonomous, we're talking about AI, we're talking about robot. So to me, I think that probably would take another uh, several decades uh, to really achieve full autonomous of the data capturing, data processing, decision support, or potentially about decision making. Um, and then for the next uh, three uh, slides, I'd like to just quickly share with you about our project and also some of the latest progress. So in this project, we try to look at the automated scan versus beam uh, for real-time construction progress management. Uh, for infrastructure uh, construction projects. So just try to quickly share with you a little bit background about the, the industry in Australia. So at the moment, uh, many of those uh, major infrastructure projects uh, in Australia has suffered from major cost overrun and project delay. Uh, and apparently there's an increasing demands for automated reality capturing and also intelligent decision support during this, uh, the construction phase of those infrastructure projects. Just give you one uh, simple example. Uh, I'm not sure if any of you took the, uh, the light rail to come to the campus this morning. Uh, so during the construction of this light rail from 
CBD to uh, the southeast, uh, uh, like suburbs of Sydney. Uh, this project has been delayed by two years during the construction. And also there's over 1 billion Australian dollars cost overrun just for this one single project. So as a result, uh, our project tried to look at a streamlined workflow and try to look at different innovative approaches. And then we can use the data, use information to support the project management. And then in this case, we try to look at into quite a few uh, gaps in the knowledge, including the very limited work about scan versus beam uh, for project management, and also how to process the big data during the construction. Uh, that becomes quite challenging, as I mentioned before. And here, as you can see, uh, the drones, doesn't matter it's LiDAR or the camera drones, they have been very, very commonly used during the construction to monitor the site conditions or the progress. And then at the same time, we can easily capture the millions of the point clouds from different types, uh, different types of the sensors. But then how to process them quickly enough? Uh, that's the a fundamental challenge to us. So the first uh, application or the project here, uh, one of my PhD students, Blake, looked into the approach of a scan versus beam for progress monitoring of bridge construction. So in this case, uh, we try to look into a uh, different type of the, you know, the data capturing technique. So in this case, uh, we have used a backpack uh, slam that sort of like a simultaneous location and mapping uh, tool. And then also we use the, the case study in Sydney next to the Kingsport uh, Smith Airport. That's the, the gateway project. Uh, and then the student had tried to do the, you know, like a quick walk around and point clouds scan uh, of the bridge. And then later on, we try to compare the scan data with the, the as designed beam model. And then uh, one of the main challenges here is about the compatibility between the scan versus beam. Uh, for example, the beam data is only about the design of the core concrete structure, nothing else. There's no temporary structures uh, like those uh, safety nets, facade, nothing at all. Uh, there's no equipment, no workers, all right? So it's a, like ideal design work. But for the scan data, it's very, very noisy. Uh, and even, you know, it's very hard to scan even past those uh, safety net. Uh, so I think that's about the uh, compat uh, compatibility issue between the scan data and the design beam model. And then in this case, he has to develop some data filtering uh, technique. For example, we use the host of distance and try to compare the scan uh, with the beam data. Uh, and then at the same time, as you can see at the bottom of uh, lower uh, bottom here, uh, we have to try to reconstruct uh, some of those, uh, you know, like uh, peers from the very noisy uh, scan data and also incomplete scan data because of the occlusion issues. Uh, the second project, uh, that is working uh, worked by uh, my PhD student Katika. So in this case, we try to look at the raw materials uh, used in the construction phase. So in one way, we try to locate, try to map, uh, and also try to register all the raw materials uh, at the construction site. And then later on, that can be linked to the progress of the project, like the consumption of those materials. But at the same time, it will be linked to the supply chain. So eventually, it's about the uh, the collaboration between the construction digital twin with the supply chain digital twin, and then we can try to look at the like the update the the program of the project, the schedule, uh, and also try to predict uh, the future, the near future uh, of the progress, and also try to better coordinate with the supply chain uh, of those uh, raw materials. So in this case, uh, we're working on uh, the other case study uh, also based on the gateway project. So in this project, we have implemented a mobile LiDAR mapping system, uh, including long range LiDAR, a high precision GNSS, and also the 360 camera. And then in this uh, approach, we try to do a quick drive around of the construction site. Uh, and then as you can see to the lower right hand side, that's about the point clouds data we can capture in about half an hour. Uh, and then in this uh, research topic, Katika has looked into uh, 
the design model of those pipes. We so we use the precast concrete pipe as a uh, as an example. So we try to compare the raw point clouds from the site with the design model, and then later on we easily identify register each of those pipe the type of the type of the pipe location orientation and also uh, sort of like a real time change uh, of those raw materials. Uh, looking into the future of our research, uh, so we have been teamed up with uh, like one of our industry partners, GeoAI, uh, with the, the New South Wales government for the transport uh, for New South Wales, and also one of the tier one construction companies uh, in Australia, SRG. So at the moment, we're working on another major uh, like road infrastructure project uh, in Jervis Bay. That's the south of the New South Wales. So in this project, it's about the intersection uh, intersection of the highway road. And then I think we have set uh, up quite a few ambitious targets. For example, we tried to do 360 scan, uh, like camera scan of the road every week, uh, LiDAR drive scan, uh, like airborne LiDAR with UAVs. Uh, and also we have several uh, multiple fixed uh, cameras for time lapse, uh, time lapse image and videos. And then if at the same time, we try to monitor all the equipment uh, on the site. So eventually we try to develop a real case about the construction digital twin and try to look into uh, different analytics uh, of the construction project. All right, that's uh, the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs> Well, challenges. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think uh, getting back to uh, Sisi's uh, suggestion, uh, the comments here about the challenges. So I think, um, as I mentioned, you know, briefly before, uh, it's about the application of digital things in construction, and then immediately, it's average ever changing world in construction. So every day, every week, every month is different. And then that gives us a lot of pressure about data acquisition uh, and also data processing. Uh, at the same time, I would say it's also about the, the noisy or the very complicated environment. Uh, for example, as I said, uh, if you try to build a highway, build a road, a buildings, it's a very, very complicated environment. And a lot of temporary structures, workforce, and, uh, and a lot of pressure for safety uh, and project management. Uh, last but not least, I would say it's also about the culture in the industry. So people will say construction in industry is way lagging behind of other industry sectors, manufacturing, asset management in terms of the productivity. Uh, I think that's the something we have to face. And people probably would be a little bit like a delaying or lagging behind in terms of adopting new technology or like the new uh, concept here. Yes, thank you for your presentation. Thanks. I have a question regarding scan versus spin. I mean, the first step, it's about to, to, to detect deviations between the point cloud and the design model, right? But it's also to, to classify what type of deviation? I mean, we have different we have different options. I mean, the component can be can be wrong, can be rotated, can be shifted, but can only be it's missing. Yep. Yep. Uh, so it's also to classify. Yeah. Uh thank you very much for your question. I think the question here is about the project uh, on scan versus beam. Uh in one way, yes, we try to use the, the design model as probably the best reference to compare with the scan data. But as you suggested, uh, what if something's missing in the beam? And then, or as I said, it's sort of like a compatibility issue between the scan and, uh, and, and the design beam model. Uh, I think you're, you're absolutely right. Um, one of the, ch again, one of those uh, challenges we are facing all the time in construction is about the design model may not represent the real world. And there are a lot of like uh, changes of construction or it could be slightly different. Uh, and then in this case, I think, yes. Uh, first of all, uh, we try to use the S design beam model as reference to field out the data 
from the scan. Uh, but at the same time, we try to look at uh, the registration issues uh, as well. But we start with a scan versus beam, but to a certain stage, it, we also look at scan to beam. That means we try to convert our as design beam model into uh, as is or as built beam model. So that's the, the process we try to update the beam model to be accurate and to be updated, yeah. Yeah, thanks. Just one question online. How do you take into account the time to process the data, LIDAR imagery, et cetera, versus the time to make a decision? In construction, you need to make decision on short time frames. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Jack. Uh, that's a very good point. And once again, that's one of the biggest challenges we, we have faced since the beginning of the project. Uh, it's about the turnaround time for data acquisition data processing, and also the decision support. Um, so historically, I think uh, in terms of the progress management, uh, I'm sure maybe you have heard about the end of the month surveying job. So we try to capture extensive amount of data at the end of the month, and then to estimate the progress and back pay the subcontractors based on the progress of the previous, previous month. So I would say uh, that's about the typical turnaround time once per month. And then at the moment, we try to capture data uh, in real time or at least once per week. So in this case, at least we try to reduce the decision-making process from once per month to once per week. Uh, but at the same time, eventually we try to do it in real time. But that's a lot of work to do. Uh, at the same time, I probably will introduce my PhD student, uh, Jack, to carry forward and talk about more insightful research for knowledge graph about decision-making support. So, so Thanks, Nelson. <laughs> Thanks.